Group C, right, it's time to talk Group C. Before we do, like, subscribe, criticize, follow. Yeah, we've got four teams. We're going to start how they're listed. Don't tell me how they end until we get to okay, the end. Okay, I won't tell right? you how we end until we get to the end. Right, Group C. Are we at the end? <laughs> no. Um, first team, France. France. Talk about France. France, um, they won their group in qualifying. They managed still by Deschamps. He's so a bit nuts. Uh, they should have won 2014. Without a doubt. Um, I, they look like they've got a ton of attacking power. Ton and they, ton and ton of attacking power. I think their biggest problem is the coach. <laughs> it looks, it seems like it, doesn't it? That, that could be where they fall foul, is, is just with a, a, they do a France meltdown. Yeah. Um, but Le Classique. When you look at it, and all the way through the spine, Loris, Kante, Pogba, Mbappe, Dembele, Griezmann. Yeah. Hell of a team. Oh, good lord. Hell of a team. Could win it. And they got Fakir. Yeah, he's brewing me to go to a bigger club. Yeah. Um, and they, they could win it. They could win it. I think that's enough about France. Let's talk about Australia. Yes, um, well... Or Denmark. You have Denmark listed next. Up. Yeah, I have Denmark listed next. Um, so Denmark qualified... Um, they beat Ireland in a, in a European playoff. Yep. Um, Age Haralde, he's a Norwegian, has been their manager since 2015. Yep. He, um, they tried to play a lot of pressing and play attacking football, and they're also uh, a bit of a threat, score a lot of goals from set pieces. Do you see this team, considering it's built around Ericsson, which is, makes it very much almost like Iceland 2.0, do you see this being that sort of team that could do really well by being a close knit unit and having a world class centre midfielder to pick things? Up? Yeah, I do actually. I think they're. Good. I think they're a good side. Um, I, and I think with with the likes of they got Schmeichel, who's a good keeper. Yeah. And they've got quality up front, like Nick Bentner. <laughs> Just about to see who's the guy. That list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. So they they don't have a, a ton of court, like outstanding players, but yeah. I think they do have enough to cause teams problems, and uh, I think they'll have a good tournament. Yeah. Right, let's move on. The next team I announced is Peru, but obviously you have we'll Australia. Go for, we'll go for Peru. Peru. Fine. Yeah, so um, Peru, uh, I think were the last time they decided to qualify, they qualified at beating New Zealand in their yeah. convoluted playoff. It is, uh, you know FIFA expanding the World Cup mm. to 48 teams? I really hope it stops these ridiculous things where like New Zealand have to play off against Peru. They're not close. It makes no sense. Stop it. Anyway, Peru. Um, yeah, Ricardo uh, Garcia, Garessa, Garissa. Um, he's an Argentinian. Uh, it's actually for, uh, Peru's first World Cup since 1982. Right. And uh, so, well done to them. And yeah. they play. They tried to play like a tic tac style, like yeah. attacking football, control the ball. Apparently, they um, had a re they had a really good qualifying campaign. Yeah. Um, relatively, considering how hard the South American yeah. one is. Um, I feel that they aren't going to score the goals though. No. They'll look good, but they won't score I've heard about Farfan though. He's got a decent reputation. Mm. And um, I, I'm actually quite happy to see old Paolo Guerra is going to actually play in this. They're oh, yeah. Good. Sorry. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, he, he's been the, probably the most publicized story about Peru lately because he won his... Um, I'm surprised he won it. Well, has he won it? Because it's been rescinded and being re-looked at. Oh, I, I think, think I thought yeah. the latest thing I saw today was that he'd won it. Oh, he might have won it then. Um, I just remember that all the captains from the team... Don't check, don't worry. We, we give you guys biased and false facts all the time. That's yeah. why you come to the us. The latest I've got is that he will be there. Well, I know he'll be there, but I know that the, the captains from all the other teams actually wrote to the mm. court for sport and said it will, like, will let him play in this. And I heard it was suspended. Mm. It was going to be re-reviewed. Uh, but that's the book. <laughs> um, okay, so, uh, so I don't think Peru will do very well. No. Uh, uh, and So the we'll, last team we need is Australia. Australia. Australia, do you want your facts up or are you going to do Oh, oh yeah, no, I've gone on to... Uh, He's come on to Group D, uh, so ladies and Australia, um, obviously Messi is their key. Oh, no, I've done it again. <laughs> um, they played 22 games in qualifying. 22. Or definitely yeah. exhausted. They eventually got over the line with a playoffs win over Honduras. Uh, they Their manager left and they've actually got a temporary manager in now. Um, uh, and Van Marwick. Marwick. Just a little bit of Australia quickly. With, with their old manager, he tried to make them feel less like a second-rate football team. Mm -hmm. Horrible to say, of what I read, and more like a uh, established like nation football mm -hmm. team. And he did that by wanting to play in very Australian way of going toe to toe with everybody, smash mouth in your face. It worked for a point. They won the Asia Cup in 2015. Had a decent 2014 World Cup. Yeah. The wheels started to fall off in this qualifying campaign. Though they they suddenly got over the line, but he didn't want to take them any further. 
I reckon this guy's going to just sort of be a bit defensively. Yeah, I mean, and Tim Cahill is still in the team. I think that tells you everything. They, they, they don't have a lot of quality. Aaron Moy's a good player. Yeah. Uh, and acts solid. Yeah. Um, I, don't, I don't see them getting out of the groups. Right. Well, in that case, I think it's time to play World Cup. War chart. I still don't like the way you say that. <laughs> Down, <Downshoot>. children. <laughs>Welcome to World Cup War Chart. This is where me and Tom do predictions on the opening group games of Group C. We'll do the whole group and we get three points for a win, one point for three points for a correct score, one point for a correct forecast. And at the end of the tournament, whoever has the most wins the coveted my very biased trophy. opinion World Cup. I've lost my pen. The VBO paper and trophy. I've lost my pen. Okay, I've got it. Okay, I've got it. Right, I'm gonna go first. Yeah. France versus Australia. 3 0 France. I'm not going to go first. 2 nil France. Okay. Oh, shit. Uh, Peru, Denmark. Uh, Peru, Denmark. I am going to go 2-1 one, one to the Danes. I'm going to go 1-0, Denmark. Do you know that all of our results seem entertaining? And do you remember how the World Cup is uh, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think of that, like the no cagey things are. Uh, Denmark, Australia? Uh, Denmark, Australia. I think that will be a 2-1 win for Denmark. 2-1 for Denmark. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm going 1-0. Boring. Yeah. Just sheer boredom. France, Peru. France and Peru. That's, uh, I'm going to go 3-0 to France. Uh, I'm going to go 3-0 as well. Um, Australia versus Peru. Australia versus Peru. That's it. What do you think? I'm going to go for Peru to edge this 2-1. You know what? Let's live lower. 1-0 to the Peruvians. Okay. Denmark, Denmark and France. 1-0. I, I was going to say that too, but I'm going to just go with a French nick in it too. One right, ladies and gentlemen, we have France ending first, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think so. I've got two wins and a draw. I've got three wins for France, actually. I've got the Danes Second. following them up, and I think that I have Peru above Australia. Yeah, I do too. Excellent. Thank you That's very much. World Cup Group C. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and do all those other and things. And we'll be back tomorrow with Group D.